Okay, this is a Leader LDC 823S. I just disconnected it. I'm going to give you a, a quick look at the beauty of the unit. Face plate is in gorgeous shape. I don't see a scratch on it anywhere. A little tiny nick, maybe right here in the chrome. But outside of that, this thing is in beautiful shape. Not a scratch on the case. Very shiny condition. Take a look at the rear of it here. Beautiful. This particular unit is the top of the line, the Cadillac, or if you will, of, uh, of Leader's line. It's um, one of the features that it has is a high accuracy um, one part per million oscillator, oven, uh, ovenized oscillator for timing. And um, couple that with its very attractive large digit, that would be a turquoise colored um, fluorescent screen for the digits. It's a very beautiful unit. Nice size. It's not too big, not too small. You could easily see the digits from across your bench. Not a, No problem at all. I say they're pretty close to, I don't know, three quarters of an inch high for the looks of it. But... Uh, very attractive. Everything about it is in good shape. Cord, stand, you name it. What I want to show you is that this is my rubidium standard. The rubidium standard is feeding this distribution box. And that distribution box is feeding through this cable channel B of my oscilloscope and another channel is feeding this PTS 500. The PTS 500 right now is selected to put out 10 megahertz and what I'm going to show you I've got that coming in on channel A of my oscilloscope so here's the 10 megahertz from the PTS 500 here's the 10 megahertz from the uh, rubidium standard and as you can see they are locked at the same frequency now I can change the the setting on my PTS 500 let's raise it one Hertz there's one Hertz and we can see that we are no longer in lock uh, channel A is now shifting one Hertz out of 10 million and I'm gonna lock it again So I'm doing this just to show you that I have the 10 megahertz frequency coming out of my PTS 500 that I'm accurate. The PTS 500 is putting out an accurate signal. Now we're going to take channel A. We're going to plug it into the input of this leader LDC823S. And as you can see right now, we're reading 10 megahertz within a hertz. And that's at a one second time base. We're going to go to a 10 second. And we're going to see how we do. So there we are, reading uh, 10 million to better than a tenth of a hertz. one is off to the left and we are reading an extra fraction of a hertz on the end so 10 million point zero we're on a 10 second count right now so we're averaging over a 10 second period to get that additional uh, decade of, of uh, frequency reading 
But we're going to all that trouble just to show you that we've calibrated accurately and, and it's holding. So let's go ahead and, uh, and give a test at range here. Let's go back to um, one second. And let's take ourselves to uh, six hundred thousand. All right, there's six hundred thousand hertz. Should go seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred. Meg, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> thirty. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, change our range. All right, there's 100 megahertz. There's now we're on the 80 megahertz range. We're reading 100 megahertz. Let's go to the 250 megahertz range. And let's go read 200. 300 megahertz. 400 megahertz, 490 megahertz, 80, 70, 60, there's 460, 460 is our top end. That's on a counter that's rated at 250, so we are exceeding that by a great deal. Let's go ahead and, uh, and check the low end. Okay, in order to uh, read the frequencies below 600 kilohertz, I've switched to this HP 3320B frequency synthesizer. Right now, we are uh, synthesizing 600,000 all right that's where we that's where we started earlier to go up we're going to start and go down here so let's go to 500 400 300 200, 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30 kilohertz, 20, 10 kilohertz.
All right, there's 10 kilohertz. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six kilohertz. Now we could pick up an extra decade of reading if we wanted by going to the 10 second time period, but we'd have to wait 10 seconds for a reading, so let's not do that until we absolutely have to in this case. Here's 4 kilohertz, 3, 4. Alright, I've switched my uh, sensitivity, my input impedance, excuse me, from 50 ohms to 1 mega ohm. Picking up a little bit of sensitivity here. We're at 2 kilohertz. Let's go to 1. Alright. 900. It's 900 hertz. 800. 700. 600. All right, we're at 500, 400, 300 hertz, 200 hertz, 100 hertz. All right, 90, 80, 70. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Now this actually is the lower limit of the unit and its specification. But let's go ahead and see if we can go lower. We got nine hertz, eight, seven, eight, okay. So we were able to read down to eight hertz. Seven, we dropped off. I could probably raise my input signal and pick her up there. I just did. I doubled my input signal, and uh, and I've got seven hertz. And here's six. No, nope, can't get six. So we're falling off drastically at this point. But we were able to do with inspect ten hertz all the way up to four hundred and sixty megahertz using this unit. And the readout was accurate for every step. So I'm very happy with it. And along with the unit, I'm going to provide user manual, which I've included foldouts uh, with the uh, service drawings. So you've got a large schematic here to work from, not just the little tiny things that you often get. And the manual gives you information about how to use the unit and calibration, so on. So happy bidding on this beautiful unit, which remarkable shape it's in. This thing looks very much new. But it isn't.
Happy bidding.